Hi, everyone. Welcome. My name is Macaulay. Uh, I'm going to be leading our session today. And today we are going to be talking uh, about telehealth and refilling prescriptions online. Telehealth and online prescriptions. So what we are going to cover, we're first going to cover what telehealth is in terms of what we mean by that term and what that encompasses. Uh, then we'll also talk about how you can schedule a telehealth visit and also what cases telehealth is suitable for. And then we're going to talk about options for online prescription refills and how to do online prescription refills safely. So starting off, what is telemedicine? So uh, to start really simple, telemedicine is either a website or an application, uh, so an app on a, on a device that allows you to access medical services remotely. The American Academy of Family Physicians defines telemedicine as the practice of medicine using technology to, to deliver care at a distance. So in short, telemedicine lets you see a medical care professional remotely via your devices. You can That can be on your phone, if you have a smartphone, tablet, or a computer. And you can generally see general physicians, nurses, dermatologists, therapists, psychiatrists, all through a website or app. So you can really see uh, the gamut in terms of medical care professionals uh, through uh, telemedicine. Now, there are a lot of positives and pros to telemedicine, um, namely that it, it can be more convenient and, and gives more accessible patient care, specifically to those who may have maybe mobility issues or um, maybe you know, just live a, a fair distance away from their doctor, so it can be more convenient. It tends to minimize unnecessary non-urgent ER visits, so in place of going to the ER because we don't have any other options in terms of seeing our primary care physician or walk-ins, uh, we can use telemedicine in place where appropriate uh, and non-urgent enough. It can significantly reduce healthcare service costs. Uh, so sometimes that means that um, you might end up paying less because the overhead costs overall are lessened by doing telemedicine, right? Um, not paying for the rent of the, the, the patient waiting room or anything like that. So it can reduce costs. Uh, it can also improve access to specialized care. Now, uh, you're on in New York, so that may not be as much of an issue, but specifically this uh, pertains to people who may be in, you know, more suburban or even rural areas where, you know, you may not have a specialist uh, close by and that might mean a big a long trip into a city. Um, whereas for telemedicine, you might be able to get uh, at least some access to specialized care, some sort of, um, you know, specific doctor um, from a distance. Uh, it also allows doctors to provide ongoing support to patients and family members. It become a really great way also to involve caregivers, unpaid caregivers that you may have in your life, right? Uh, to be able to loop them in electronically if they're not able to be there in person, but they are supporting you in your care. Uh, and it also increases the chances of continued independent living. So if you are someone who is living independently right now, uh, we know that technology does this as a whole, but especially being able and understanding how to use and access telemedicine can increase that chance of independent living uh, as it gives you the tools to be able to seek care, uh, even when it might be difficult, right? Um, again, maybe issues with mobility or else just in the winter, it gets super slippery and cold out there. And sometimes it's just not easy uh, to get out uh, and get to an appointment. Now, some of the cons of telemedicine uh, can be things like reduced care continuity. So, um, right, if you use, uh, say, a telemedicine app for a one-off appointment, so you have a cold or, uh, and you have maybe have a sinus infection, you just need, you know, a quick prescription for some antibiotics, whatever it is, um, and you go to, it's the same if you go into a walk-in, right? Um, those records, your primary care provider, if you have someone that you see regularly, uh, may not have access to those records, or it may be a situation of getting them access to those records. So continued care um, can be a slight issue there. It's also not suitable for all cases. Obviously, when we're talking about telemedicine. It may be suitable for, uh, you know, non-emergency uh, sicknesses uh, or injuries or else uh, for ongoing support for maybe pre-existing conditions um, that you have. Uh, and it's not offered by all doctors at this point, 
pretty much should be, but there may be a few. Um, and obviously, when your virtual physical examination is limited. So when should you consider using telemedicine? Many less severe symptoms can be adequately assessed through telemedicine visit, uh, as can follow-up assessments for ongoing health concerns. So some examples of this might be, you know, a minor fever, uh, minor respiratory infections, headaches, including migraines, heartburn, and GERD, sprains, strains, and joint pain, painful urination, colds, and canker, and mouth sores, conjunctivitis or pink eye, symptoms of the common cold, flu, and allergies, constipation or diarrhea, and rashes or other skin conditions. These are things that, you know, might be good for getting telemedicine help with. Now, there are a number of telemedicine providers out there. Here are a, a number of them that are operating in the States. There's literally so many. And there's also going to be telemedicine providers, depending on if you do have insurance coverage uh, and what's within that network. And if you don't, uh, what's accessible without it. Here are some Sesame Care, Plush Care, Teladoc Care, Humana, HealthTap, Amwell, MD Live, Live Health Online. There may be more. The best course of action to take when you're looking to finding a telemedicine provider is if you do have insurance coverage, is to contact your insurance and ask what their preferred kind of telemedicine app or network is and where they provide coverage. Um, and if you would be paying out of pocket, that's going to be a, a different too. Maybe you can ask a doctor. Uh, we're going to do a live demo of MD Live today, which does accept out of pocket payments for medical visits through the app. Uh, and so we'll look at how that works. Now, uh, accessing telemedicine on your computer is going to be a bit different than accessing it on a phone or tablet. So if you're accessing on a computer, you can use any web browser you prefer, whether that's Microsoft Edge, Mozilla Firefox, Google Chrome, Safari, and you can search for or directly type in the web address for the service you would like to use. For example, for our case, we're gonna be going and using mdlive.com today. Uh, all of these services should also have a corresponding phone and tablet app. So um, if you are going to be accessing these services through those devices, you'll visit your device's app store, um, so the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store, and search for that app. Um, you uh, may want to just you know, make sure you're extra careful when downloading these apps, that you're looking at the correct one correspond the logo with the logo you see on the app icon uh, and make sure you read the description of the app carefully when downloading. Now, as I said, we're going to be doing a live demo of MD Live, just an example of how we can book one of these online appointments through one of these providers. Um, but you can also access your primary care doctor online. And if you would like to or prefer to see your primary care doctor, you should ask them if they are set up to on handle online or phone appointments. Many of them might be, uh, and they will have a specific app that they use to facilitate those visits that you will might have to download. Um, but maybe talk to them, right? They may not be um, aware that that's something that you feel comfortable with or are willing to do. Uh, and so if you haven't had that conversation with a primary care doctor yet, uh, ask if that's an option for future visits, if it's something you're interested in. But as I said, we're going to show how booking telemedicine uh, appointments kind of works on the most simple front. So you can get an idea of, you know, the kind of information you will have to give and how you book an appointment. All right, so I'm going to do this on my computer. It will look obviously slightly different on a phone or tablet, but it should be pretty much a similar experience. I'm just sharing on my computer because it's a bigger screen and it's going to be easier for you to see. So here we are on the MD Live website. As I said, there is both a, uh, an app and a website uh, that you can use. Um, they do have a phone number as well, so you can call for, for support. Um, but this is the website. Um, when you get to it, if you're on the app, you would have created an account and you've been signed in. Uh, but when you're getting on for the first time, you will have to create an account with one of these services. So if I just click create my account, it's going to ask for some basic information, my email. Uh, I'll create a password. And then enter a date of birth and then click create. 
Now, once we do that, it will ask for additional information, right, um, to complete a profile. And then we'll click Submit. And then if you do have coverage, it's going to ask you to put in your coverage and you can enter in that information here and go through the process of connecting that. If you don't have coverage, you can say, I don't have it, or you can skip and add it later if you just want to explore. And then it creates your account. It may need to confirm your location. And here's my profile. Now, when you set up a profile on this specific site, you can add dependents, especially if they're on your state insurance. Um, but you can say, who needs help today? And click on your name. And then you'll see the options um, to what you can do. So just a regular medical visit, um, therapist, psychiatrist, dermatologist, right? Um, and you can pay out of pocket or do this. Now, obviously, you know, it may be easier to go see a doctor. This can be used though, if you're kind of really desperate to see someone and you need to. So there's always two options on this, see first available or schedule a visit. So see first available basically lets you connect to whichever doctor is going to be able to take care of you quickest. And so you can get an appointment really quick. You can also always choose to schedule a visit and then you can select from a list of doctors uh, and maybe get more up there. But I'm just going to click on see first available for the sake of this example. So we'll click on see first available. This will just connect me to any doctor that I can match with, right? Um, again, we can always select the doctor through that other profile, that other schedule thing and select a time. Uh, this is going to be your quickest method though. So what it will do is it will take you through a questionnaire, much like you would get in a doctor's office, but it's just doing it through this chat bot. It's the health assistant. So what's the primary condition you want to discuss with your doctor? Um, we can, I'll just go with red eye here. It will then um, start asking follow-up questions depending on what symptom you put in here, which eye is bothering you, so left. And then it will ask for specific symptoms of that thing. You can sometimes select multiple as well, right, on this. Um, and then click Submit. It should ask more questions. And you just keep basically answering these. Just going to keep asking follow-up questions to give them a bigger picture of what's going on here. So they can kind of fill out your health history a bit and understand and you can always say, if you want to give any more information to the doctor, you can literally type in, um, or you don't have to. I'm just going to write, never mind. And then you click set. And then click continue. Now, um, some things, depending on what you're seeking care for, they may uh suggest you give pictures um so that you can uh give more information right um so in this case i could submit a picture if i wanted um take a few pictures there we go great and then i can click continue right, and when you're doing this on a phone or tablet it's going to be that process itself is going to be much easier because you'll just click take a photo and you can just take a photo on the spot with a phone or tablet so that process of the photo taking is actually much simpler on a phone or tablet than it is on a computer. Um, and then again, it's literally more questions. Don't know, there's some optional stuff here if you know it, continue. So it's just like seeing a regular doctor, you're just doing it all on your phone at first. Uh, and then you can also uh, pick a pharmacy. So if you do end up getting a prescription from this visit, you can select a pharmacy uh, near you and just click search. Uh, it will give us options. We can choose that Dwayne Reed. And then this is where we get to the payment part. Uh, so again, you can choose to select a payment method. And then once you do this, it will schedule your visit and then you'll be able to see a doctor uh, either via over the phone or via video call within this platform. So it will ask you if you'd like a phone call or a video call. Uh, it will then 
give you a scheduled time of when you can see someone and you will be contacted that time you'll be given that information through either this website or the app on your device basically then it's usually a phone call or a video call the doctor will continue to ask you about your symptoms and maybe do a quick examination and then make suggestions for any sort of follow-up care so either a prescription or you know seeing maybe another specialist whatever it is so that is kind of that sign up process but that's how that site works and that's how a lot of those websites work so they're all formatted pretty similarly in terms of you give that information set up now that might seem uh, a lot and concerning right because we're giving a lot of health information over the internet so when we're doing these appointments always just making sure that we're in a private obviously space for ourselves we want to provide the same privacy of care when we're doing these online appointments as we would expect when we're going into the doctor's office and also make sure that when you're inputting that information you're at home or on a trusted internet network when you're doing it right uh, the websites themselves the apps themselves are encrypted they're safe uh, so we just want to make sure that on our end we are doing this in a private setting to keep our information health information uh, and privacy uh, now there's like i said tons like that um, and you may not want to go through that method those sites are fantastic again in place of going into like a 24-hour walk-in um, or something like that if you just want to get care really quickly maybe you have a really bad cold and you just don't want to go outside but you need to see someone to get a prescription something like that uh, can be used for those purposes when it comes to seeing our primary care physician or doctors through other like maybe a specialist that we've been recommended for like I said, they will have their own channels for doing so. Um, and generally, uh, it's either a phone call or it might be a specialized app that they have. And they'll generally give you that information uh, via email to set up those appointments. And it's like a link or something. So be aware that that might play out in a number of different ways. Um, but that all of these networks, all of these apps and websites that doctors are using are generally encrypted and safe. So you don't have to be worried about privacy on that. And um, it's going to allow you basically the same level of privacy you would in a room um, when you're doing those telemedicine visits. So at that point, you'd be scheduled. And again, you will be directed by the site to how your doctor will contact you. And telemedicine doesn't necessarily need to mean that you have to do video calling. It can just be a phone call as well. So depending on your choice and your comfortability, that's how you'll be contacted. Um, but we just use that technology of doing that chatbot to facilitate the uh, setting up the appointment, which is part of what makes it a telehealth situation. Now, remember, not all apps do look the same or offer the same services. So do your research before choosing a site on an application uh, and check with your insurance provider to know what apps you have coverage on. Uh, and again, these apps are great for minor symptoms, but more severe symptoms should be examined in person. Okay, now we're going to talk about how to fill prescriptions online uh, and how to do it safely. So uh, pharmacy apps or websites. Almost every major pharmacy offers online prescription refills and delivery. So filling prescriptions online is relatively easy to learn and doesn't require a lot of upkeep because you can set up things like automatic refills from your device. So physical barriers shouldn't keep you from getting your medication on time. Now, online prescription refills can also help you achieve some sort of sense of independence, especially if you have caregivers who look after you. Any mobile device, whether it's a cell phone or a tablet or a computer, you can uh, get these prescriptions refilled. So what are the benefits? Why refill prescriptions online? Obviously, it's kind of similar to the other reasons for telemedicine and telehealth visits. It's flexible and convenient. Uh, your hours are the pharmacy hours. You don't have to worry about, you know, getting there on time or getting there 10 minutes before closed, and it's going to take them you know, longer to fill your prescriptions. So you may just have to come back the next day. You can do it on your time. Uh, the same services are available. So whatever you do in person can be done online. Sometimes there's maybe additional conveniences that you don't get in person too. And it's going to be easy to set up and use. Once you're set up once, it's pretty much good to go. There's not a lot of upkeep in terms of doing it or refilling prescriptions once you've set up the initial account. 
There's always options for automatic refills as well. So it keeps your medication on schedule and prevents you from missing doses. So you can set up automatic refills specifically on delivery services. If you want to uh, do something like that, you can, um, but it will fill it so you can always just go pick it up when it's ready, when your current uh, prescription has run out, it will be ready the next one because it will automatically refill based on how large the prescription was. And it also minimizes contacts with others, right? Especially in these times, it can minimize contact with others and potential exposure to viruses. You'll spend less time in line at the pharmacy um, and more time just picking it up and getting out. Um, so you're not in line with, you know, someone who has a cold or something. Um, so you can, as I said, have prescriptions delivered. This will vary uh, based on service. It's around $5 or more per delivery. So most pharmacies offer one to two day deliveries uh, for around seven bucks. Although this may vary again, depending on, on how far you are from the, the pharmacy. But if you're filling a prescription online and picking up in person, uh, the service is completely free. So there's cost only if you want to deliver prescriptions as well. But if you're just filling them online to go pick them up so you don't have to wait around while they fill it, uh, that's going to be a free service. Uh, and if you're curious if your pharmacy does online refills, as we said, most major, basically all major pharmacies like CVS, Costco, Walgreens, on the drugs, Walmart, they'll all do online refills. Uh, independent pharmacies don't generally do refills, but they probably do over the phone refills. So again, a conversation to have with a pharmacist if you're uh, and going to an independent pharmacy about you know how they can do online refills or anything like that. Now, we do want to make sure we stay safe with online pharmacies as there are a number of them out there. Now, we have uh, a differentiation between pharmacies that are, you know, major pharmacies, again, like CVS and Walgreens and Dwayne Reed um, and their online services. There are also services that are just online pharmacies. So you can uh, get all your stuff delivered, um, and there's actually no physical place that they exist. They're only online for delivery. Um, and generally, again, with the ones we know, the big ones, we don't really have to be as concerned about safety, but with those other ones that are, you know, uh, just an online pharmacy, we do want to be more careful and take extra care because some pharmacies may look trustworthy, but sometimes they may not be. So you want to check first if your online pharmacy is legitimate. Um, so the signs to check if an online pharmacy you are accessing, so whether it's through a website or an app, is legitimate and safe uh, to see if it's fraudulent. So if the online pharmacy allows you to buy the prescription without any valid prescription from your physician, that is something of a red flag. If the pharmacy does not have a U.S. state license to answer your question, so if you ask to speak to someone um, and you're not able to, uh, if they offer prescriptions for a very low price, a shockingly low price below what they're usually listed as, that might be a red flag as well. Um, and if they constantly send you emails offering cheap medicines, uh, and of course, if the pharmacy is located outside of the U.S. and ships the prescriptions worldwide, that is something you want to avoid uh, as those medications will not be FDA approved and they'll not be legal in the States. And for signs of a safe online pharmacy, the pharmacy requires a valid prescription from your doctor or licensed physician. The pharmacy is licensed by the state form of pharmacy. You should be able to see that somewhere in their info or about page or if you look them up. Uh, they have a U.S. state license to answer your questions. So if you need someone to talk to someone, you should be able to speak to someone. And the pharmacy is located in the U.S. and provides their street address and business address. You can use the National Association of Board of Pharmacies and the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA websites to find these regulated versus unregulated pharmacies. So if you're using one of these, do your research. But again, if you're unsure, I'm sure most of us are using Dwayne Reed or CBS or something or the other anyway, those ones we can trust uh, that they are legitimate. Uh, but in the case that you're using one of these, you know, newer, uh, online pharmacies that are that are out there, uh, something to consider. Now, uh, so how do we do this? So how do we actually refill our prescriptions online? So to find your pharmacy's app or website, the uh, best way to do it is you can do a Google search, or again, if you're using an app, go to the App Store or Google Play Store and say, type in the pharmacy's name and download the app. 
Um, so we're going to do this. We're going to use CVS as an example just to look at kind of what this website looks like and how you navigate them. So the information you will need uh, when you are filling a prescription online is your name, your address, your age, phone number, and your existing prescription RX numbers. You will then uh, might want to prepare a pen and paper if you're creating a new account to take down your password, right? To take notes about how to get to certain areas, uh, just so you remember what your login is. So you're never locked out of getting those prescriptions refilled. So once you are on the website or app, uh, you'll want to sign up for an account. You'll have to have an account to fill these prescriptions. You generally don't fill them just by like putting the information in and going to pick it up. They'll want you to create a, an account that's protected by a password. So you'll start by clicking sign up and I'll show you how this works in a second. You'll fill in your name, address, age, any other information they prompt you for, much like we looked at at MD Live, it will be a similar process. And then you'll be able to look up existing prescriptions. So if you already have prescriptions at say CVS, you can look up with your last name and the RX number, the existing prescription that exists at that pharmacy, and you can just tie it to your account. Or otherwise you can type in a new RX number uh, and add a new prescription uh, to your account. And then you'll be able to set preferences for your prescriptions, like setting up automatic refills, uh, or delivery or pickup. Um, and it's like a number of just selections and options we have there. And I'm gonna look at CVS a bit, um, but just know that all major pharmacies have staff on hand to walk you through setup and use. So if you're not sure about your specific pharmacy and how this process is gonna work or look, you can always call them and ask. Uh, they will also have a number of walkthroughs online on how to set up these accounts uh, and how to set up these settings. So links for all of them. So um, CVS has uh, a video in all of these places. So we'll look at the CVS video um, and then we'll look at the actual site itself and how it works. Staying on track with your medications is important. And at CVS Specialty, it's easier than ever to refill your prescriptions from your computer or mobile device. When you need a refill or once you receive a reminder, sign in or use Touch ID to access our app. First, select the medications you need. Next, answer a few quick questions. Then, choose to pick up your refills at any CVS pharmacy or have them delivered to your home or another location. Tap Submit and your order is placed. It's that simple. So that is just a snippet of what this looks at. You can also visit uh, CVS, but let's look at how this works. So I'm gonna do this on my computer, looking at signing up for an account and setting this up. Here's a CVS website. Again, this also exists as an app. When I'm first here, um, I'm gonna go to the pharmacy. So to get here, I literally, I Googled CVS refills. Um, <clears throat> you can type in a specific at cvs.com forward slash pharmacy. Um, to get to this particular page I'm on. So if I have an account, I can sign in. If I don't, I can create an account when I'm first getting started. So we'll create an account using our email address. And then we'll create a password. And then you can always optionally add a mobile number. This can be helpful for getting uh, additional updates on your prescription is ready to be picked up once you've you know, done the process online. So that is there. And then you'll click create your account. So once you do here, you can go to your account or you can just get started by clicking connect my prescriptions. And uh, it will, ask for any records. So like I said, if you have existing records on CVS, like you have filled prescriptions there before, and if there's anything on file, uh, it will say, we found you in our system, let's verify it to you. So otherwise, you should be able to just refill your prescriptions regularly. So when you come to the site and you're logged in, um, 
you should be able to uh, view all existing prescriptions that you've set up. So anything a doctor has sent over, you'll be able to put in, or you can always transfer. So if you use a different pharmacy and you want to transfer it over, you can always transfer a, a prescription to CVS to this site, transfer from CVS to CVS, or transfer from non-CVS to CVS. So we can click on one of these options and we have to fill in the pharmacy name and phone and city and state. Um, to get that information filled out. And then we're giving our information and the medication number and the prescription number so that, that the CVS pharmacy that we want to transfer it to can contact our previous pharmacy and transfer it over. So we can do that all online. Uh, and then once that's done, once we have our prescriptions and we're logged into this account, anytime we come to our account here, all of our descriptions will be right here. So we'll be able to click view all prescriptions. And what we had seen in that video was that it had, was like click on all your prescriptions and that's where that page will come up. It will show any sort of prescription that's under your name and your account uh, on CVS. And you can select them and select how that works. You'll also have a section here called manage automatic refills. And this is where you can turn on or off automatic refills on certain prescriptions. This should also give you information as well as about how many refills you have left. So the great thing about managing this online is that you can also always check how many refills you have left, right? You don't have to call the pharmacy or try to remember, how, was that my last refill? Do I need to go get it uh, re-upped again? Uh, you should be able to look at all that information on that prescription right from this site. You can also schedule vaccinations from this uh, site as well uh, at a local pharmacy too. So that is all available when you have this CVS account. And again, similar services available on all the major pharmacy websites or apps. Um, but that is pretty much how that's going to work. Setting this up with a caregiver maybe who wants or needs access as well can be a great uh, thing to do, right? If you uh, want someone or have someone helping manage your prescriptions, uh, they can also have access to this. Uh, you know, your family members or loved ones that may be helping you and so that they can help you manage it as well. So it's not, um, you know, you calling or them calling and, and talking on behalf of you. If they have access to the account, they can help you with that. Something to be careful about, obviously. So it, it makes that ease of transferring or having access to that care from multiple locations, places easier, right? Maybe you're out of town and you're like, I need to pick that up when I get back. You can do it online and then get it done and pick it up right away. You know, we've all been in those kind of situations where we forget to refill something. So all of that is there uh, to do it. All of these sites, Costco, Walgreens, they all have a how to use the online pharmacy landing page that can walk you through this. Also talk to them, you know, if you're at the pharmacy, ask the pharmacist or someone there if there's a way that they can help you set up your online um, prescription refills for next time. And that way you'll have a much easier time with it. Well, thank you for listening. Um, if you have any questions about this topic, you can always call us toll free at 844 217 3057 or visit us online at www.cyberseniors.org.